Welcome back everyone to another day of Road to TG Worlds 2019. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And if you're live with me on Twitch, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. And so we are going um, we are going to now be exploring a little executor. It's been a while since we took a look at the card. Um, the CGI being a pretty big thing and a pretty hyped when Lost Thunder came out. Um, definitely made it so that uh, the fragile eggs and the ditto and whatnot and the super high HPs um, was complicated to um, to pull off but um, as the CGI has lost a bit of popularity I think um, this deck has a decent chance to get some good wins. Uh, Lola Executor is a monster 160 HP on a stage 1 is a lot especially because there's no like choice wind boosts and whatnot so it's a really good amount to have and Tropical Shake does a very healthy amount of 20 damage plus 20 more for each type of basic energy card in your discard pile, up to 100 more, so up to 120 damage total. Um, and then, um, that's why we play a wide array of basic energy, even though we only need grass to attack. Um, 160 HP is pretty great, and then the Execute has Multiply to search for other Executes, which is also pretty useful. And then we have um, Shuckle with its Fresh Squeezed, which I still hate the way they call the ability. It should be Freshly Squeezed um, or Fresh Squeezed, not Fresh Squeezed. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it bugs me so much. Um, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to the bench, you get to search your deck for three basic energy cards and discard them. So that's how you power up a long executor really quickly. And then Energy Drink can even be useful because you attach the basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon any way you like. Then we have Laurentis promo with its Sunny Day ability to deal extra damage for our grass and we don't have fire but it can help those as well. We deal extra 20 damage um, with our our grass type Pokemon deal extra 20 damage, sorry that's what I meant. We have Tero Prism Star as well to support as a 5-4 Executor Liner as a 2-1 Laurentis as well. And then we have the 2-2-1 two, two, Sceptile line. So Grogal is pretty nice with Sunshine Grace. You get to search every turn for one and sometimes two grass Pokemon and put them into your hand. And then you have the one of Sceptile with Power of Nature, which prevents all damage done to your Pokemon that have any grass energy attached to them by attacks from your opponent's Ultra Beasts. So very fitting that the Ultra Beast theme song is in the background because Sceptile is the anti-Ultra Beast card. Now, supporters wise, we have same lineup as before for Lily, for Guzma, for Cynthia, and the one of Copycat. It could be a Tail and Liza. I'm just experimenting with the Copycat. Then we have four Shrine of Punishment to increase the damage output and make sure that we can take those big KOs. We also have Triple Choice Band to increase our damage output as well. For Netball and for Trouble, finds us basics, uh, gets us the Shuckle, but also finds us energy at clutch times. And then we have. Um, seven basic grass which we will use to attack and then one of each of the other energies in order to um, power up the Alolan Executor. So we have six different types of energy. Um, we need five different ones in the discard pile. So even if one gets prized, um, we can still deal the 120 thanks to having uh, a grass energy in the discard pile. Um, and if two energy get prized, then our maximum damage output becomes 100, so that can be a problem, but it's not the end of the world. Um, could Machoke actually help this deck? Yes, it could, but I don't think, like, when I tried it out, it just wasn't enough, yeah? And the Ditto, like, you need to bench the Ditto, right? You need to bench the Ditto, and the Ditto immediately becomes a target for your opponent when it goes down, and against something like the Zero Nine Tails, Unless you're getting the Ditto out on turn 1, it's just gonna get sniped by either double Feather Arrow or a Ninetales attack plus a Feather Arrow. So it's a, it's a tricky situation. Like yes, it would be decent, but it's also usually not enough to, um, to make that big of a difference. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We do have um, 3 energy prized in fact, 2 grass and the water. So the 2 grass could be very hurtful. Yeah. Giraffe is indeed a mega oof for this deck. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and bench the other trigo to thin and then we shall send. Yeah, I haven't started turn one Lily, I don't think. Uh, we do find an execute which is decent. I also find a shrine which I think I'm okay playing just to start damaging stuff and then I'm gonna go ahead and pass. My trigo is definitely gonna survive the turn unless my one goes Lele, TC. Um, well, Lele, DC, Guzma could knock out my Execute. That would be terrible. But Lele, DC, 
Yeah, if you have Lele DC, he's gonna go after the Execute by finding a Guzma. Otherwise, he would need an Escape Board or a Switch to knock out my Trigo. Um, yeah, Dino and Machoke are both pretty easy targets, indeed. Indeed. Okay. So, Triple Zorua. This should be a good matchup in theory, right? This should be a good matchup in theory. Triple Zorua. Triple, triple Zorua. I hope that's all my opponent does this time around. Okay. Double choice band, not the best. I mean, I guess I can evolve the bench, dude. I definitely want to find an Alolan Executor here. And so I need one of my three net balls or one of my five grass. So I have eight outs to, um, to a grass energy. Uh, the choice band, though, the choice band. I guess I'll attach it to the Grobile. And then I'll go ahead and Lily. Lily into six of playable cards is never nice. This deck gets better with the new set. Why? What comes out in the new set that makes it better? Uh, Jarfarig and Lysander Prism both cripple this deck, but neither is played enough to be overly concerning. Yeah, Lysander Prism is definitely not played at all. And Jarfarig only in control decks, which are definitely not seen anywhere other than in best of three. And like the last time we saw a good control deck was um, at the LATAM International. So yeah, I mean, expanded, that would be a worry, but in standard, I don't think it's a big deal. Ah, oh, what a hand. Single heads on timeable. We could be seeing a Macargo here. It doesn't seem like my opponent's off to the strongest start either, so that's good, right? That is definitely good. Um, why didn't I grow out for the other grow well? I don't know. <laughs> that was silly. Well, I didn't. I guess I didn't want to commit the executor to the active spot. No, that was probably a mistake. I should have used grow well for the other grow well, retreated, if, and then used grow well for the executor, and then played the the thing. So yeah, there's my card, but my opponent has already traded. Oh, Lysander Prism. Okay. How does Lysander Prism help you beat Gramble, though? Alolan Mock helps you better than the Gramble, I think. I mean, than the Lysander Prism. Okay, we're gonna see a Kukui. Does my opponent play switch? You see a Ligon Rock, bring up the Grovile, that's super annoying. Okay, he gets a knockout, that's fine. This is where the misplay, I definitely misplayed, 100% I misplayed on uh, not getting the second Grovile. Hopefully it doesn't affect us too much. Ah, I should also have to, okay. I'm not very concentrated right now. Focus Pablo. You really need to focus here. Yeah, I'll draw for the other Grovel is so bad. But I have to. And I need to promote the Trico. So I could get the Psychic into a discard pile. Okay. Definitely some pretty bad plays so far. On my part. Not gonna lie. Yeah, not gonna lie. And let Cynthia. Can we get a Grass now? If we get the first hit in, that's pretty good. <laughs> A dead hand plus no grass. If they lose access to three Gramble or Snowball, you win? Okay, fair enough. If you like Zoroark, does not need Mock to beat Gramble. If you knock out the Macargo and stagger your Zoroark GXs when Transplant Event is in play, you feel like you can beat them. True. 
True. But it's definitely harder, right? I need to be drawing really well off of this target sword, like off of a single trade. Ah, oh, what a hand. What a hand. This has been the theme of today's stream, I think. Oh well. It happens, right? It happens. I'm not playing Zip Strike, I'm not playing Marshadow, which both could be good inclusions in the deck. Maybe necessary inclusions. Replaces the stadium. So my executor takes two hits to knock out, but then I'm not doing anything, so I'm literally not doing anything. Ugh. You can see a timer ball. Single heads. That's an extra trade. It's like you start off wrong by prizing two grass, right? So that immediately reduces your chances of attacking. And then you go up against a dead draw. <laughs> Every time, right? Every freaking time. It's the next card. Every freaking time it's the next card. Jeez. This would be like, I would be one shotting, or he would have been forced to find a Zerola. Like, I'd be pressuring his resources. Because I didn't retreat, I can't even goof my KO that guy with the grass. <sighs> my misplay definitely hurt though. Like, my misplay was a big deal. The two misplays. It's been two misplays in a single game. Then not going for the Grovile. And because I didn't go for the Grovile, I didn't retreat. And then I also didn't promote the set the Trico, so I didn't retreat. So it's like, it's all... It's all the small decisions. I guess that's... <laughs> my misplays are a teachable moment, if you will. All the those, all those small decisions that you get wrong, like even on turn one, they create a big disadvantage, or they're creating a big disadvantage for me. And all the ones that you get right, they create a big a, an advantage, right? So right now, I'm just... This is not great. <laughs> you think the new Mr. Mime will help it? I have no idea what the new Mr. Mime does. And option to play Dragon type eggs and use Mysterious Treasure. I mean with Chuckle you're not really You're not really in a spot where getting energy into a discard pile by through discarding means is a big deal. So I would argue um, like I don't know what the Mr. Mime does. I don't think the Dragon type eggs is gonna be too important to the deck. Okay. So now I have a grass in the discard, I top deck another grass. So now I can finally get a knockout on the like a rock. But this has definitely not been my best. My best. Okay. So I get two prizes here. Mr. Mind blocks a Cerola. Okay. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty decent. We're gonna get two grass energy off of this, aren't I? Aren't I a water and a grass? Almost. Almost. Um, okay, so we are stabilizing and we're not too, too far behind to the point where we have to worry like too, too much about Zorg, like out resourcing us, but enough Acerolas to make us lose. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they could just target down Mr. Mime, right? Like, they, they will happily take the the turn to knock out Mr. Mime, and then you attack them, and then they start Acer rolling. So, not sure. Not sure. Not sure how the ruling would go on Greninja GX, JGB? What do you mean? Greninja GX is an attack, and it goes back to the deck. So, you're not healing, you are... Um, going back into the deck. Okay, so we see a Guzma onto the Grovile. That's kind of okay. It's one less ability, so I don't mind that too much. 
and in the price trade-off we are kind of okay. I mean, it stops me from getting more Alolan Executors consistently, right? <laughs> I've topped the Grass Energy the last three turns in a row. What is this deck? What even is this deck? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard these two. What even is this deck? It seems... Okay, so I'm, I think I'm gonna go after the Cargo. That seems better. It makes his trading like less straightforward. I think it would be 100% JGB. Greninja is not healing itself. It's not picking up the Pokemon, it's going back to the deck. Okay, I found another way to get a Grass Energy. <laughs> I literally it into like, what, four draw supporters? And now I have all the energy, which I needed before, and now I need the supporters. These decks, man, these decks. Wow. <laughs> what? That's four turns in a row I've now top decked. Grass energy, what the heck? What? The heck? <laughs> what are the odds of that happening? They can't be very high. <laughs> wow. Tropical Shake for 120. Probably gonna retreat. Well, definitely not a threat. It can put me to sleep, but that's it. Um, so about the Pokemon having damage on it. Yeah, but then Mr. Rhyme says you can't heal it, right? Or you can't... Well, I don't know. I Yeah, it would depend on the exact wording of Mr. Rhyme. Maybe it would. Maybe it would. At least I have attackers ready, right? Three Alola Executors versus three Zoarks. Acerola counts is what worries me though. Acerola counts and Palpad. I think that's the biggest deal here. Acerola counts plus Palpad. And then I have two targets on the bench that my opponent can bypass and just knock out through Guzma. So it's not even the Acerolas, now it's the Guzmas that are worrisome. Uh, shrine, not very useful. I mean, we're at the mercy of what my opponent can do. One card hand, like our one card hand definitely can't beat his 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 card hand. Yeah, immediate counter, immediate Zorg, Guzma KO, Guzma KO is enough to win him the game. So, our starts are with these non GX decks, that's the issue, right? Like, you don't have the draw power, you don't have like that extra oomph. To get you there so it takes them longer to win because you are not GX, but it also takes you longer to actually do something and especially like you really need to draw things in the right order and when you lily into six unplayable cards and then you Cynthia into a dead hand and in the last four turns I've topped the like, grass energy that's really weird Yep. 
Two Guzmas wins in my opponent the game. Two Guzmas wins my opponent the game. Two Guzmas wins me the game, but I'm not gonna top deck Guzma Guzma. I can't top deck Guzma Guzma. Because I'm down three Guzmas. <laughs> 50 years later, I get my Cynthia. And I just get another dead draw card, dead draw hand. Anyways, uh, sure. My potential misplays in the beginning created a disadvantage for sure. But was it significant enough to where it mattered? No. DC, preemptive, well played. I'm just gonna see the good now. Yep. Okay, terrible showing for these launch X decks. Alone Executor, Lost March. Um, what was the other one? Buzz will shine. Terrible, terrible. This, the theme of today's stream is oof. Yep. Indeed. Terrible, terrible. This probably needs at least one, maybe two more shadows though. I should make that change. Why would you drop the copycat? Yeah, the copycat. The copycat for a Marshadow makes a lot of sense. Going second, that also makes a big disadvantage. Yeah. Turn one Lily plus Execute plus Shuckle. Decent. Um, I think we're up against Ray. I saw Wishful Baton and Lightning energy. Nothing does 40 damage on turn one, so I don't need to bench the shockle to be safe. And that is a Zekrom GX. I didn't even know that card existed. That's a problem. No, I did know, of course I know. Uh bullet uppercut. 10 plus damage your opponent's active ones up on GX or below on EX is attack with 60 more damage. Swift Pulse Strike. Flip to coin 60 more damage for each hands and rampage bolts 200 damage. Yikes. Okay. So top decking on energy just because we didn't have enough in our hand. Right? I have three energy prized once again. <laughs> oh my gosh. How awful is this? How awful is this? Ah, uh, let's set up a Trico. I mean, our execute probably lives, right? Our execute probably lives. We just retreat, attach a grass, we start attacking. So it's not the end of the world. It's just, it's really weird to get this awful combination of cards. Oh, never mind. Execute does not live. Execute gets trampled on by the, the bullet uppercut electro power combination. Which is fine, right? It's honestly fine. It's honestly fine. So we lose an egg, that's okay. We have another one ready to go, we're about to evolve. I couldn't have done the attach retreat thing because I need to attach a grass, of course. And so let's Cynthia into not a dead hand because that happens, oh my gosh. <laughs> Come on. Why does this happen so much? Yikes. 60, very, very low damage. 
Like, I'm not even threatening a KO next turn. Oh. Oh boy. I mean, he only hits. He only does 10 damage. He only does 10 damage. He can retreat at any point, though. That's 40 damage. This is so awful. This is so, so awful. Oh. Oh, wait, Tapu Goku? I mean, it deal. Oh, no, it does KO me. Oh. <laughs> because he used Electro Power. Wow. We are so dead. We are so, so dead. <laughs> What is this? How am I drawing this bad? Not even a Marshall would have got me there. What is this? 2019 is not being kind to me, Pokemon wise. 2019 is not being kind to me, Pokemon wise. Okay, one well, last try. You have a good deck, right? <laughs> Let's close out the, the stream on a positive note. Let's close out the stream with a win here. I am tired of losing. I don't like losing. The one thing I don't like about Pokemon is losing. What I like the most is winning. Yeah, two Marshall are probably also good. At least one is necessary. But you know what's more necessary? That you Cynthia into a not dead hand every time. That's the key to winning in Pokemon. Playing Cynthia and then drawing something else that's kind of useful, right? Not the most useful, but that's kind of useful. Besides Concede, have you won at all today? I don't think so. <laughs> I actually don't think so. Okay. This hand looks promising. Wow, no energy price this time. What? And Lorantis promo is available too. Okay, so we are now in the alternate dimension. We are now in an alternate dimension. So a Lily. Wow. Okay. I will happily take this. Now this is an incredibly good hand, right? Like now we're on the other side of the spectrum. This hand is so good, it's probably very unrealistic. Yeah. This hand is so good, it's probably very unrealistic. And it's gonna happen not very often. So that's Pokemon, right? Sometimes you're on one side of variant, sometimes you're in the other. Most of the time you're in the middle. Um, so sometimes you get very unlucky. <clears throat> sometimes you get very lucky like I am right now. That was literally the best possible start I could have hoped for. Like, it, the only thing you would trade would be the Ultra Balls into Alolan Executor, Promo Laurentis, and Grovile. Which might happen this upcoming turn. In before Marshadow into a Death Draw? <laughs> Save that for Ditto? I mean, possibly, yeah. Possibly, though. I already have the Fulmantis set up, which is why I need to constantly KO Giratina. Um, I guess there is some merit, like my opponent will eventually take a turn to Goose Makeo the Laurentis and then I'm two-shotting the Giratinas, but he's also two-shotting me. And Goose, thank you so much for the two months of Prime, very, very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. We're now up to 90 M&Ms in a single go. Like, how many M&Ms does a pack have, the, like the normal ones? Probably like 20? So, so far I'm gonna have to eat... Anywhere between four to five regular packs of M&Ms. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support, guys. Okay, I'm gonna ultra all away these two. Get Grovile. Grovile gets me uh, the thing, the active. Uh, I don't foresee myself getting a one shot this turn, so I'd rather just guarantee the executor because if I go for Laurentis hoping for the one shot, that's not very realistic, I would say. I don't mind trading to he goes with a 
Giratina because eventually I will get a one hit KO on the Giratina. So we should should be fine. As long as my opponent doesn't have and now we dead draw. Jeez, these Cynthias guys. These Cynthias are really starting to annoy me. I Cynthia into a dead hand every time. <laughs> but we have a really good setup. Regular M&Ms have around 210 pieces in a regular bag? No, that there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. Like the normal bag, there's no way it has 210 pieces. There's no way. Like the small bag, like the regular size ones, those have like 20, tops 25. The deck is indeed clunky, I agree. And... Let's face it, Eminem will no longer be your thing after this challenge. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Depends on how many, right? Depends on how many. Depends on how many I have to end up eating. Like if someone... <laughs> Henry, thank you so much for the Eminem's. Like if someone goes crazy and gives like 50 Eminem's and then I have to end up eating like 500, then yeah, that would be probably too much <laughs> thank you so much for the extra m&ms henry very 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 kind of you thank you so much <sighs> maybe you should change it for three or four times the number of subs Luis. <laughs> i mean if you want to see me like have an upset stomach <laughs> i mean it depends like Two times two is enough if we get a lot of people. If we stay at 45, then maybe 90 M&Ms is not a big deal and I would have to make it uh, a triple multiplier. I could make goals as well. Like if we hit 100, then I mul then anything above that means it's times three. If we hit 200, then it's times four. That would be probably a little bit too much. Probably 1.5 times and... Uh, I mean 2.5 times and times three. That could be interesting. Okay, so we get set down. We don't want set down. Um, let's grab the Lurantis. <clears throat> and so I can KO Malamar, which I think would be correct. I can't KO Subtract yet because KOing the Giratina doesn't really accomplish much. I'm gonna go after the Malamar. Paul's gonna give himself diabetes. Like once eating that much in one sitting is not gonna be that terrible. If I were doing it like weekly, then definitely. <laughs> but no. It's just to do something silly and to encourage you guys to subscribe. Yeah. To encourage you guys to consider subscribing. Okay, so we got the first prize card in this race. We see an energy on the Gratina. If it hits me for 130, that's completely fine. Because then I just get another prize card. And I'm two prizes ahead in the prize race. And Henry, thank you so much for the extra M&Ms. Um, they will probably be the regular ones. Uh, peanut butter ones, like that would be a lot. Or the peanut ones as well. I'll just be eating the regular ones. M M Mini M&Ms would be cheating. <laughs> They'll be the regular ones. The regular chocolate, milk chocolate ones. Yeah, so Strike and Mali is actually pretty decent. So Strike and Mali is actually pretty decent. And there's a Guzma that we were talking about. Um, so I get to bench the Ditto, which is nice. I get, I get to bench the Ditto, which is nice. I get to knock out the Giratina as well. Uh, I get an Energy. Which is kind of helpful for later. I don't want that, I want that. And did I see Rahul's crazy stage to deck? Yeah, I did. Um, Meganium has been gaining a lot of traction. And I mean, for a good reason, right? Definitely for a good reason. Um, I do think it's a, a pretty cool deck. It's cool to see in action as well. That's for sure. Okay, Netball gets me another grass, which is nice. They need to be all orange M&Ms. <laughs> Why would they need to be all orange M&Ms? That would be terrible. 
That would be terrible. Okay, so the Giratina comes back, he puts the damage there, that's fine. So now we enter a loop where he gets a knockout, I get a knockout, he gets a knockout, I get a knockout over the course of two turns. Um, if at any point I get a Kuzma, I definitely challenge a Malamar. Right? I definitely challenge a Malamar because that might make him whiff by powering up, by not having the resources to power up another Giratina. Um, my opponent could end up taking himself out as well. He's two stretchers down, three Cynthia's, and he's using Sip Strike a lot. Look at your glass. <laughs> it's full, yeah. Henry's been pretty nice uh, being in charge of filling up the M&M's. <laughs> Thank you so much, Henry. Very, very kind of you. Thank you to everyone who has who contributes to Table One. I really, really do appreciate it. I really, really do. Those are red, not orange, indeed. Yeah, the glass is full of red M and M's. There's one orange in there somewhere. Aren't they all orange shotgun nostrils? No. That's red in my head. Like, I made the red m and Oh, he has double Giratina. Ooh, that's actually pretty bad. The double damage counters will allow the Alolan Executor to go down eventually. Yikes. So that's a problem, because he gets one-shots and I don't, until I find... <clears throat> Until I find a rescue stretcher, aka a draw supporter, aka anything. <laughs> Jeez. And I'm sending my deck constantly too with these. Um, <clears throat> with the cards I'm playing, but I just I can't. <laughs> Thank you so much, Henry. Very kind of you. Very very kind of you. We did indeed say that you were in charge of filling up the glass. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're only hitting for 80 damage too. And we're about to hit for 120. <clears throat> so I need the Laurentis back. I need the Laurentis back. That might let me keep my lead. That might let me keep my lead. I need to draw something though. So I can find a stretcher. So either top like a stretcher or just find a Cynthia or something. Attack with Septile next turn. To make him with knockout. I mean, okay, so the active executor will not go down. Alright, the active executor will not go down. Top like a grass. But attacking with Zeptal doesn't seem like a bad strategy either. It's just being so short to the knockout really sucks. No, I think I... I don't think I attack with Zeptal. I'm 40 HP. Because he could hit me for 130 and then play Kuzma. Hello, Riahisama. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so then energy over here. And then we'll get the knockouts. Okay, I have a top deck and a prize card to get a rescue stretcher. Okay, the Marsh Shadow could be useful. The Marsh Shadow could definitely be useful, kind of. Kind of. I'm gonna attach the lightning to Shuckle to thin it as well. We see the distortion door, it's gonna go to that executor and the execute. Further research shows 55 to 60 per one pint of regular MMs. Seven ounce bags. Uh, how much is seven ounce in kilos? Like, that's definitely not the normal ones, right? Yeah, Septa already has 10 damage now. So, my point is actually. Uh, contemplating the possibility of Septile. So now we're definitely not going for that. I don't know why you wouldn't target the Execute though. Okay. So this is one of the key turns which I will either continue to build on my 
um, advantage or perhaps lose it. One of those two. My bird's not gonna Guzma, right? He's just gonna attack and then next turn he might Guzma and then bring up the Giratina. So if I don't KO the Giratina, okay, if I get a Guzma, oh, I can't. Ugh. So I can't attack this turn for the maximum damage, which is actually not terrible. It's actually not terrible purely because he can't use Giratina this turn either. Right? can't use Giratina this turn either. So it's a trade-off toolkit chaos. It's literally like Executor is trying to see over the MMs in the <laughs> It's like what's going on guys? What's happening with the duck? <laughs> okay, my bird just hits. He has to place the damage elsewhere onto the Malamar, that's fine. Okay, so now I promote the Shockleth, and now I bench the Marshadow. Another useless choice bend. And I think now I evolve into the Sceptile, right? Nah. Do I? Yeah, let's evolve, just to thin. A Guzma could be decent. Either Guzma Okay, we got the Kuzma and we got the Lorantis. That is great news. I'm definitely gonna retreat to this guy, and then my opponent will be like, oh, awesome. But not quite, my friend. Not quite. And I'll use the clean executor. And I'll drop a little shape. So I get a prize. And my opponent hopefully can't get a prize unless she has Guzma. Which she very well could. There's two Guzmas played, probably at least one left. But we're ahead and we are staying ahead. That's the key. We are ahead and we are staying ahead. So what's gonna happen now? What is going to happen? My opponent has... Three energy in the discard ball, so she could power up the other Giratina, thinking that that is safe. What about Lysander and Giraffes? Um, I mean, this is terrible. Why didn't I get the Laurentis? Just to give my opponent a false sense of security, perhaps, to use this new Giratina. Yeah. And because there might be a reason to stretch her back three things. I mean, I was hoping to get something, right, off of the Marsh channel. Uh, okay. So I might get punished here. I don't get punished. I could have been punished for not grabbing the, the Laurentis. It's just, like, between the false sense of security and also... I think there was some argument to... Um, to not powering, I mean, to to perhaps needing to stretch her back for an, a third of all executor. And there's a stretcher again, so I don't know. Maybe a misplay on my part, maybe not. Uh, yeah, I have to, right? If I do this, I'm pretty sure I win. Because I get a knockout here, I'm done to one price card, I have two attackers powered up. And so if he knocks out my Laurentis, I have Guzma in return. If he knocks out the active, I have the executor plus Rantis, so now it's a win-win. A Perhaps I should have played the stretcher. Yeah, I mean, maybe I should have just played it, yeah. Maybe I should have just played it and gotten, over it, gotten it over with, but if I did, my opponent might have actually act, like actively targeted it, right? She might have gone for a Guzma play onto the onto the Laurentis, and then I would have been stuck um, only attacking the active. So I don't know. 
Like, if the data is in there, there's still the benefit of the doubt of, oh, does he not have another Laurentis? Blah, blah. If the Laurentis is in play, then it becomes an immediate target so that the Giratina survives. And now we see a Kuzma onto the Executor. Not even... Okay, so that's a mistake. Like, if you're gonna do this, you play to the possibility that I don't have... Um, you play to the possibility that I don't have... Uh, a Kuzma, right? Now I just promote and win. I attack, I promote, I attack, and win. And so Tropical Shake. Are two Whaler Magic Art tag teams worth one solo Gallo promo in the long run? Um, in terms of value? Probably not. Because Whaler, Magic Art Whaler tag team, it's a promo right now, and then it's gonna come out in this set. And there's gonna be less hype, I think, for, the, than, for that than the solo Gallo promo. So, like, is that a good trade? I think it might be. I think it might be. If you're the one getting this whole Galio. Not if you're the one getting the Whaler and Magic Card. Um, so, yeah, we got a win. We close out with a win. Um, the decks definitely made us really fight hard for our, um, for our wins, but we managed to do so in the end. And so, guys. With that, that will be all from me today. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And if you're watching live with me on Twitch, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, yeah, for another stream. And then that will be all for the week because uh, Wednesday I have a crazy day of coaching and then Thursday and Friday I'm taking a vacation. Uh, my first non-Pokemon vacation in a long, long time. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. And I'll be back next Monday to do some probably more streaming and uh, definitely next Tuesday. Yeah, but so far, I'll see you guys tomorrow for sure. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take it easy. Appreciate all the support and have a nice start of your week. Bye-bye.